Harry Haft had his share of trials. He survived Auschwitz and practiced boxing for many years. And all that time, he never stopped looking for his beloved Leah. They were separated when they were young. Both ended up in concentration camps, and Harry promised to find her, no matter what. Walking along the beach many years later, he remembered the day the Nazis took Leah away. It was the beginning of his long journey. After surviving Auschwitz because of his fighting skills, he went on to box in the ring. After gaining 13 victories, Harry began to lose. During his matches, he began to have visions of the past, of a time when he balanced daily on the brink of life and death. After the fight, Harry went with his brother Peretz to the Union of Jewish Communities of Poland to hear a beautiful woman Ruska sing. Peretz wants to marry her. While he is admiring his future wife, Harry is approached by Emery Anderson. He is a sports journalist and wants to write about Harry and how he fought in a concentration camp. But Peretz sends Emery away. He forbids his brother to tell the story to anyone. After talking to Emery, however, Harry has a thought. He has been searching for Leah for several years to no avail, and the publication in the newspaper should help him. Maybe Leah will see her and respond. The next day, Harry goes to a Jewish organization that helps find missing relatives and friends. But there he is once again told that there is no record of Leah. Harry makes a scandal which is noticed by an employee of the organization, Miriam. She calms him down and promises to continue the search. Harry is fired up with the idea of getting into the newspapers. He goes to a boxing club and asks Louis Barclay to get him a fight with boxing star Rocky Marciano. But Louis is sure that Marciano has no reason to fight an unknown boxer. He's bound to refuse if Harry doesn't make a famous name for himself first. Then Harry takes a desperate step. He meets with Emery Anderson and tells him about his life in Auschwitz. He ended up in that camp in 1943. He and other prisoners were forced to burn murdered Jews. One day Harry's friend Jan saw his wife among the dead and rushed to her. Harry tried to draw him away, but he failed. Then the guards jumped on them and Harry beat one of them. Obersturmfuhrer SS Dietrich Schneider saw the fight. He took Harry to Jaworsno labor camp and ordered him to be treated. From that day on, Haft was well fed and protected from the attacks of the guards. When he recovered, Schneider took him outside the camp and offered to box him. After getting punched in the face by Harry, Schneider realized that this man would help him make money from prison boxing fighting. Before the first fight, Schneider warned him that he had to stay on his feet. Only then would he be credited with the win. Harry won, and the next moment, his opponent was shot. Then a new prisoner was brought out against him, and Schneider warned that unless Harry wanted to go to the gas chamber or a bullet in the forehead, he must win. And Harry won time after time. Anderson wrote about it, and when the article was printed, every Jew he knew turned his back on Haft. Peretz was furious that his brother had contacted a journalist. He was on Harry's side, however, for he had saved him in a concentration camp. Haft continued to train. Pepe was showing him how to move on the ring when Luis came in and told him that Rocky Marciano had agreed to fight him. Because of that article, the hype went up, and it allowed the fight to be organized. Congratulating Haft on his success, Luis called him a beast, implying that he would tear Marciano up. But the nickname brought back memories for Harry. The German officers, for whose amusement he fought in camp, called him a Jewish beast. After a while, Haft went to watch Marciano practice. Here he was spotted by one of Rocky's coaches, Charlie Goldman. He led Harry out of the building before he could be seen. Goldman is confident that Haft will be wiped out in this fight, that he has no chance against Marciano. Despite that scandalous publication in which Harry was portrayed as almost a Nazi collaborator, Miriam continued to help him with his search for Leah. In gratitude, he offered to walk her home. On the way, he told her that the concentration camp prisoners told jokes to each other. It was a rare opportunity to forget where they were and to laugh. Shortly thereafter, Anderson comes back to half to take some pictures for the paper, for the fight with Marciano is coming up. Harry tells him about another fight. Then he was pitted against a professional boxer. Before the war, he had fought for the French heavyweight title. A fight with such an opponent lasted more than 30 rounds. They had been in the ring all day, and as evening fell, a spotlight was directed at them so that the German officers could see the fight. Harry survived that fight and earned the right to live another day. After the fight, Schneider treated Harry to a drink. When he went off to go to the bathroom, Haft took his gun and was about to shoot the Nazi, but he didn't have the guts to pull the trigger. After all, he had nowhere to run, and with this shot, he would sign himself to the death sentence. Sometime after their last meeting, Miriam visits Harry to give him news about Leah. Miriam finds information that the girl was in one of the concentration camps until the end of the war. But beyond that, her trail was lost. This news made Harry happy. And it was not the last piece of happy news, for Goldman had agreed to prepare him for a fight with Marciano. 
He would instruct him for two days so that Haft could lose to Rocky with dignity. During the evening sparring, the fireworks start and Harry crouches in fright at the ring. He has flashbacks from his past life, when he was a prisoner of the camp and the bombing began. Miriam comes to watch the fight with Marciano. Before the fight, Harry asks her out, and the girl happily agrees. In the first round, Haft performed well, but then visions from the concentration camp filled his head, and he lost touch with reality. Marciano turned him into a punching bag and won the fight. When his brother came to support him after the fight, Harry told him that during the fight he felt that Leah was dead. There was just an emptiness inside him, and he lost all desire to fight. He was determined that he would not fight again that day. That was the end of his boxing career. When Peretz left, Harry remembered the day he had tried to escape. Schneider caught up with him and tried to shoot him. Haft, however, took his gun from him and shot him. Harry invited Miriam to Peretz's wedding. This is where they danced for the first time, even though there was no music. After the ceremony, Miriam took him to the synagogue. She wanted Harry to regain his faith in God, but he had lost touch with Lord forever after the incident with his sister. She had just given birth when a German officer arrived and threw her baby into the back of a truck, where it perished. Despite this, Miriam still manages to soften Harry's attitude toward God. After a while, they get married. But upon returning from the wedding, Harry is unable to make love to his wife. He can't stop staring at the door peephole, remembering his life in a concentration camp. They used to bring Jewish women to him for winning battles, and while they were lying in bed, the officers would peek through the peephole. Miriam and Harry were married for many years. In 1963, they had three children and a small store. As Harry stood behind the counter, Emery Anderson walked into the store. He had once promised to find Leah, and only now did Anderson dig up information about her. He handed Haft a piece of paper with her address on it. This news thrilled Harry, for he had given up the idea of finding Leah years ago. He took his son Alan and took him to the boxing gym. Here he had him punching the bag for hours on end. The boy didn't understand why his father was doing this to him, and Harry just wanted to teach his son how to fight, because his fists were the reason he had survived Auschwitz. Harry still had nightmares at night, and Alan could hear his father screaming in his sleep. Miriam asked her husband to tell their son about his past, but Harry did not want to unload on him the abomination of what had been done at the concentration camp. He told his wife how his friend John had died. They shared everything and always stood up for each other. But then one day they took him into the ring against Harry. He didn't want to fight, but Jan begged him to finish him off before the Nazis did. Harry agreed. He beat John half to death and then crushed his throat with his knee. And while he was dying, Harry read a prayer. Miriam is certain that her husband had no other choice, because it's not fair to choose between his own death and killing other people. However, Harry still believes that he could have done otherwise at the time, could have given up and died. Shortly after this conversation, Harry decided to visit Leah. He told his family that he would take them on a vacation to the coast, but Miriam immediately suspected something was wrong. When Harry took Alan and offered him a ride in the car, Miriam knew he was going to Leah. She was hurt, but she let her husband go. When Harry arrived at Leah's, she was already waiting for him. They had called her husband beforehand. Leah was ill and didn't have long to live. She said she had seen a newspaper article about a fight between Haft and Marciano. It happened the day after her wedding. Leah was happy that day that Harry had survived Auschwitz. Before their imprisonment in the camp, Harry and Leah had only dated for a couple of months. However, their love allowed them both to survive and find marital happiness. Now, however, Harry felt great bitterness. For having met Leah after all these years, he had to say goodbye to her forever. As he left her, Harry told his son about his time in the concentration camp. Alan must know why his father had become the way he was, why so much fear lived in him. Harry would love to cut the horrors of imprisonment from his memory, but he has to live with this nightmare. Back at Miriam's house, Harry told her the anecdote he had failed to tell while walking along the boardwalk years ago. That story was about the ability to be thankful for what God gave you. He and his wife laughed and held hands while sitting by the sea. Harry Haft lived until 2007. Miriam died in 2019. They left behind three children and six grandchildren. And that's where the movie ends. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to watch more movie recaps videos like this.